Ciao ragazzi, come stai? Everything's okay, thanks for being here. So Ralph, the metal commando is back and it's like 110% Primal Fear with a good taste for melodies. This is the 13th album, uh, will be out July 24th this week. Uh, it's produced by your bassist, of course, and leader, I might say, as long as you you both together okay uh matt sinner and it's mixed by jacob hansen the title it's a statement itself and does you know um being back with nuclear blast like feel like coming back home and that gave you know a particular direction to the new songs not the no no not the record company uh, we always did our music on our own so it's not a it's not a term of the record company at the end but what we are doing we're really happy to have the team of multi love last back for us because there's just also all metal heads and they're somehow good friends of ours we drive somehow like 20 uh, meters uh, minutes from here and then we are in the nuclear blast office and we can negotiate things uh, eye to eye and not phone to phone in the end and it's great to be back with a fresh team. They work, they do a fantastic job for us. They are doing great marketing packages and like now promotion and stuff. It's, it's a great team. It's great to be back. And, but music wise, it was always a band and composer thing. So, so they have nothing to do with our music, but they support the music. And that's the great thing behind it, you know. Ralph, when it's time to compose a new album, uh, since you are a big name um, in metal since years, um, now you compete in a sense with yourself or you still, you know, take a look around as the world of metal, you know, is very prolific and full of new stuff, especially, you know, Nuclear Blast Roaster, you know, they have a lot of stuff always coming out. Or maybe it takes, you know, a little bit of both to reach the perfect balance every time. The good thing is we're really relaxed about it because we always did something what we love to do. So we don't have, we, we don't feel any pressure in the end because Whenever we feel that uh, the music we compose uh, is fitting perfect to us because we like it first place, then we also know that quite a lot of fans like it and that's a good thing behind it. So there's no pressure. And the good thing is we have five writing members and uh, it's an advantage if you have a pool of something like 15 to 20 songs to pick from in the end. And such great songs in the end, which I'm a fan to, too, because uh, I sometimes I write my lyrics and my melodies to it uh, and, and Matt and and Tom also does, but um, first of all, if you sit in here and bang your head to the stuff you composed on your own, it's a good it's a good feeling, it's a good vibe. So there's no pressure. We don't somehow compare to the market. We do not compare to other bands in the end. We just uh, compose what we love to do first, and then there's no pressure at all. So, of course, yeah, we have a roaster now, like you said, but we are also very, very easy and uh, no pressure at all. Ralph, on the record, uh, are there just brand new songs or there's something that you saved from previous sessions like old riffs that maybe come, you know, back to life sometimes? Or maybe also, you know, the lockdown gave you extra time to sharpen the blades, let's say. I didn't get the first part of the question, but I heard something that the songs are brand new. They are brand new and it's got nothing to do with lockdown because we wrote everything before the pandemic started. So I think okay. that was the question. Right. And yes, I was asking, you know, if there are all brand new songs or there's something, you know, from previous uh, sessions that you saved uh, from yeah. the past or old riffs that you worked on. No, they're all brand new in terms of almost one year now because for me the first song was sung one year ago already <laughs> so um and and all the songs were already finished and mixed when the pandemic uh, broke out in the end so that's uh, got all the lyrics has have nothing to do with, with any pandemic or whatever so we were lucky to record everything and uh, to mix everything before everything started but then when we did the photos and the first yeah. video started then the pandemic was there it was it was hard for us to work but we made the best and we did it in the end and we're happy about it yes ralph you have songs since you know the beginning that you know start from uh, uh, four minutes songs but also up to 13 minutes like this time with infinity how do you understand you know when a certain idea for a song requires more 
more elaboration and you know it's good to have it long land and more articulated we have this certain way of ethical tracks since a few albums now and we've always thought and we always felt that it, it's a good thing i mean if you're driving your car for instance and you listen to to music and you get all the expressions from outside and have the, a certain soundtrack which is the long track for instance now infinity you even listen to that track and you look, look to the landscape it's just amazing what what expressions and, and uh, physical visual wise and also uh, uh, hearing wise are coming to you so uh, for this track which was born from Magnus and for Matt it was the same thing we uh, they put together some parts and in the end they really match together like they're linked to each other so if you listen to the track after the 30 minutes, you really think, wow, it's already 30 minutes over, I can't believe it, because it's really not getting boring in the end, right? That's what I felt when I heard the f a song first. And when I'm singing, I'm always adapting to the atmosphere, so I'm adapting to the atmosphere of, uh, of the track, otherwise I could not somehow deliver the message behind it as a vocalist. And it was just outstanding again how this worked again in Infinity, and it's getting better each time, so we don't approach this like, oh, next time we have to be two minutes more or like that. It just came naturally, and it just really came out of the flowing that the song ended like it is now. Ralph, being a vocal coach like you are makes the job easier for you when it comes, you know, to going in the studio and also to have long tours or actually self-criticism and self-discipline in some way the hardest part. Both. Really, but to know what you're doing in the end. If you know how to warm up your voice, I mean, this comes with experience all over the years anyway, but uh, what I'm doing as a vocal teacher is to transport my knowledge to my students in the end and make sure they understand what I'm saying, and that's my part, you know. But well, as you say, when I'm touring and stuff, it's also very important to be smart, physical-wise, what you're doing, you know, so you have to control in a very economical way and when you are in a studio, that's sometimes a hell because I'm too sometimes uh, perfectionist, you know, so I'm, I'm trying to repeat things and I mean not words, I mean repeating verses and choruses until I'm satisfied. Sometimes that's a bummer. But now in the end, the result is everything that matters. So I'm really happy that I'm doing this. It's it's uh, sometimes a burden because I, 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 I almost sing until I bleed. But in the end, in the end, it's worth it because now it sounds like it sounds, so it's all good. Ralph, which are the pros and cons, you know, of changing lineup since you've done quite a few times through the years and recently you changed your drummer again. So is it something that, you know, gave, you know, is gave a newborn feeling or it's the hardest part? What would you say? It's again both. I mean, it's hard to lose somebody which you're, you know, you have in the team because you're growing together. And if those, those things happen, it's like in a relationship, some, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But there's no hard feelings with our ex members, so everything is fine. And we're really happy now to have Michael because he's just an amazing drummer, as you all hear on the album. And as you know from Gamma Rain, from the Unity, his other bands. And he's just amazing, also personal, which doesn't mean that the other guys were not great guys. So that's, I'm not saying this, but, you know, it's, it's really a match now. We had uh, the advantage to play live last year. We couldn't do it this year. And we got to know each other more and more. Personal-wise, there's no problem. Drumming-wise, not anyway, because he's, he's, he's amazing. And, yeah, I mean, this, again, is a push for, for us in the end for Primal Fear, and that's great. Question from uh, a listener which is called Giorgio, and is asking you, how do you find the actual metal scene? Is it in good health in your, you know, at your ears and at your eyes? I think it's in better health than, uh, unfortunately, the pandemic people, people are. I mean, you know, there's always, for me, there's a certain healthy underground in heavy metal, and that's a good thing. We always have the true fans all around the world. And you can see these kind of seeing things on festivals when you look at Bakken, for instance. It's just amazing how many people gather together to listen to heavy metal music. And that's the healthy part. And that will always be there, no matter. I mean, in the 80s, there was the peak, of course. And in the 90s, in, in there was a little bit of a, let's, let's say, a valley of it. 
But in the end, everything came back in the 90s. And, but there's always, no matter what, there's always a healthy underground. And that's great. It's just amazing. Ralph, Judas Priest are among, you know, the pioneers and legends of heavy metal. And they have been a clear influence on you guys as well and still are. Uh, being compared to them is flattering. And uh, of course it is. And, you know, I'm talking about the spirit, the style, the attitude. Uh, but can it become a limit, uh, like a cage in the long run, you know, from the expectation, also for the expectation of the people from you guys? I don't think so, because we have our own style. Of course, you hear influences, and you hear that on every band. I don't want to name any names, but, you know, you know, we're coming, we're 80s metal child in the end, and we're coming from the new wave of British heavy metal, and doubt uh, you can hear that, of course. And uh, But in the end, we developed our own kind of thing over the years. You can hear that. I mean, songs like Infinity, I Will Be Gone. I can name many, many songs from our past albums, which has nothing to do with Jesus Priest at all. And also my singing, of course, there's a certain high voice of belting with screams, but that's a technique. It's got nothing to do with copying somebody. Everybody has this unique voice box, so I'm not copying Rob. I love Rob. He's an amazing vocalist, and then he's also a nice guy. But it makes no sense to copy somebody on purpose, so that's what I'm not doing. And, you know, like I said, we developed our own kind of style. That's my opinion. Ralph, what classic songs do you think that represents, you know, for you, the essence of heavy metal that you wish you have written yourself? Black Sabbath, for instance, it's uh, Led Zeppelin and those, uh, those bands were really the basement of uh, rock and roll heavy metal in the end, right? Deep Purple, not to forget. Those uh, bands were just really laying somehow, let's say, the, the ground and the basics of everything in the end. And then, of course, later, Jews Priest as well, and, and uh, the German band Scorpions and so forth. I can name a lot of bands right now, but um, like you said, if you ask for those bands who might have started with in the center of the black country of the uh, United Kingdom, that's Black Sabbath and yeah, later than Judas Priest. Okay, but Black Sabbath, the song, also Black Sabbath or, uh, or another song? Well, maybe also Paranoid, whatever. Okay. It's, just, it's just the era. Yeah? All right. Your previous album, Apocalypse, turned out to be a very prophetic title. Uh, how do you see the future you know, of live music? Uh, will we have like longer tours as soon as it will be possible, you know, as a result after this, you know, to satisfy everyone and maybe you'll also want maybe to stay on the road longer after this pandemic? What do you think? Well, I'm not a prophet, but I just hope for, for the genre and for the fans and for the bands as well that this will be over soon and when, that we can do the same thing like we did. I don't know because there's certain rumors we all know, but let's say 2021 will be hopefully like it was before, and then we can do the tours again. But then there's going to be a rush on the market, right? That everybody's going out again. So we just hope like we can repeat and, and, and do the things we didn't do this year, like go to America and do the European tour, which is now also canceled. Do all those festivals and stuff. Yeah. Go back to South America, do Japan again, and so forth. I know everybody wants to do it then. But we have to be smart now, and that's only smart to do, so don't do the big gatherings, it's smart. So wear the mask, and uh, really, if you are smart, and if you are really uh, taking care of the stuff, then we have the chance to go back on the road again, Like, and, and then we have to go chance to go back to, to, to festivals again. That's my opinion, my personal opinion. And you don't have rescheduled anything by now? I mean, it's all, you know, in the future yeah. to come? Yes, our, our booking management is doing a hell of a job because you don't know which uh, venue, which hall will survive all this because also the, the, the entire concert scene is really up to zero now. Nothing yeah. is happening. So you don't know what who's surviving this also as a promoter in the end, right? And that's also very important to uh, do the scheduling for a tour. You can't play in one city and then just play no other four shows and go to the next city in five days. That's not how you do touring because you do you are doing this every day almost on tour, and that's a schedule. And if you yeah. don't know how or where to play because the promoters and the cities or the venues didn't survive, then it's hard. So we will see what the future brings. Let's just hope that everything will be good. 
Thanks, Ralph, for your time. Thanks for this interview. And we hope to have you in our studios as soon as possible. Actually, to have... A, we love to have, <laughs> Yes, we know that. And to have you also on an Italian stage very soon. Thanks very yep. much. Thank you, too. Mille grazie. And, and stay healthy. That's the most important thing. Right. And Thank also, you. always, every metal forever. Ciao. Yep. Ciao. <laughs>